Welcome to Media Minute Roundtable. For this episode, we're talking about Phobias, Happily, The Silence of the Lamb, television series Clarice. There's a True Lies TV show apparently in the works. And since love is in the air, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite love stories in media, as well, to go with it, our favorite Batmans, right after this. Welcome to the Media Minute Roundtable. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And we're into another new episode. Um, some trailers dropped over the uh, last little while. Some interesting kind of uh, thriller-looking trailers, yes. in fact. Uh, the first one I checked out this week was uh, Phobias. Have you guys seen the, the trailer for that? Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Looks, yeah. Uh, I almost feel like they get, they've given away too much. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I, yeah. yeah, like, I think they gave away just enough to get your interest. Like, watching it, like, and getting, like, the idea of it, like, at first, it's kind of like, okay, this is weird. And then, like, further into the trailer, you're like, wait a minute. And then yeah. it just kind of, like, builds. And it's kind of like, now I'm just sitting here like, okay, when are you coming out? <laughs> I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's an interesting concept. It's like yeah. they're harvesting people's fears. Yeah, like they're weaponizing. some sort of virtual reality or something. Yeah. It's like Monsters, Inc., but this with, like, people's fears, maybe. I, don't I like know. it. Really? <laughs> and kind of no, 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 John Goodman though. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's tragic. Al- that's always a bummer. But yeah, no, it definitely looks like it definitely looks like something I would pr- and probably will watch. Yeah, but I always get nervous when the first credit is brought to you by the executive producer of. Yeah, it's like mm, it's yeah, usually if, a bad if that's sign. your yeah highest uh, thing. But, but who knows, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll still definitely check it out. It looks 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 good for me. And then there's a bit of a. I was surprised to see just the way that the trailer was built that there's at least one like action like fight scene. Yeah, yep. that'll be there's interesting. Some, there's some, some action in there too. It's not just a yeah, it's just yeah. a straight thriller. So yeah, so yeah, it looks cool. uh, looks pretty cool. Like it, uh, I hadn't heard of it before before I discovered the trailer. So yeah, yeah same. Um, it's going to be an interesting one for sure. Speaking of phobias, do you guys have oh. one? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I like, oh, I don't know. Open water, like, be, like scares the crap out of me, and I don't know why. Because it's like I love sharks, I love all that kind of stuff. I've always wanted to go scuba diving, yeah. but I'm also like, I don't want to go outside if I'm not in a cage or something. Like, I could go cage diving, no problem, but like being like out in the open, ah, yeah, nope. you wouldn't be free diving scuba. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know if I have any actual phobias. I know as a kid, just because I. I swam so much. Yeah, I I was always afraid of getting totally irrational, <laughs> but getting my foot stuck in like the drain at the bottom of the deep end. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And just like being stuck there, and you can't get you can see the surface, but you just can't get to it. I don't know if that's a phobia or just a weird. I think so. Yeah, there, there's fear. probably some sort of medical name for that, no doubt. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, get a fear of getting yeah. caught in drains. Fo- footy phobia, <laughs> Dr- drainophobia. You drainophobia. I yeah, like that. yeah. For me, I have partly heights. For me, like I'm okay, like on top of like tall buildings and stuff like that. Like if there's a rail there, but if it's say climbing a rope ladder or something like that, where like everything's moving, no. If it's yeah. a little too rickety, yeah. If it's, it's a little too rickety, it's not uh, not uh, for me. That's for sure. Yeah, that's fair. I actually have like I enjoy heights. Yeah, like I'll climb anything. Uh, it's true. It is very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, if what so if whatever I'm climbing like is somewhere. stable, if it's like a steel ladder or something like that, no problem. But you know, rope ladder, no. Well, no. that's fair though, because it's like you're sitting there, you're like, okay, am I actually safe on this thing, or is it gonna snap at like any moment? <laughs> yeah. What's the opposite of phobia? Uh, a fetish? Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Yeah, I don't think you want to be going around telling people you have a hype fetish, though. I don't think that's the right way to to put that. Yeah, I'm sure I could find some people on the internet that would. You yeah, could find you anything. Yeah, on the you internet. could. Yeah. yeah, it's a wonderful thing. Set onto the dark web. So, uh, altitude fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on Facebook. I don't. Oh, I never no. check Facebook, but hashtag. Hashtag, oh god! Don't Hashtag put it on, altitude well, well, If they make you happy, let's talk about the trailer for Happy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Moving on. Segue. <laughs> well done. Got to got to save it somehow. <laughs> um, yeah, this one looks pretty interesting. It's got the guy from uh, Community, uh, yeah. Joel. Yeah. Hale, um, Mikhail. 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 Yeah. Um, and he hasn't really been in anything since Community. I don't think. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think Community was kind of, like, the big thing. It's like, I've seen him in other, like, minor I, roles, like, his cameos, but, like, I haven't seen him, like, star. I, I think star. he's been in, like, an episode of the new Twilight Zone, 
but the clip yeah. I saw him in that wasn't he, maybe he was hamming it up like to yeah. 12 there's a, there's a new Twilight Zone yeah came, came out like last year surprise oh, Shawnee uh, the original Twilight Zone is like my favorite show ever yeah I love that show um, yeah I think I don't know if like the the guys to do uh, the Key and Peel. I think Peel might be involved in really? that one interesting yeah I think so I think yeah. you're right huh. yeah uh, they did one season the last year. I haven't seen any of it though. Learn his stuff. Yeah, this is why you watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was like me last week. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. What you What did you think about it? Um. The trailer. I, I don't know if they're going for like a dark comedy, right? I got that. Vibe. Like, like I didn't get like there were things that looked like they should be humorous, but nothing landed. Yeah, like that guy me. gets like blown off the fence when he tries yeah to, i won't lie i did laugh at that a little bit it yeah. kind of got me <laughs> yeah i was confusing is this a, a, a i think a they're comedy well or? i think they're trying to go for like a thriller-esque thing but it also feels like they're trying to like satire it in a way in the sense of like there's comedic parts that kind of like play on like the thriller yeah like tropes but it's also got like the dark theme so i would say they're yeah, probably going yeah, there, for there's something comedy. going on uh, nobody really knows what it is. Like there's a suitcase with like syringes and yeah. like neon like green weird stuff. Party yeah. with people. So I never really like. It's almost not really a genre, but a subgenre of like dinner party movies. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, like, <laughs> that's like, true. Like Clue. Yeah. Or like even like Knives Out recently. I've heard Knives Out was pretty good though. Like I heard, oh, I heard that one got like pretty be. good reviews. Yeah. But yeah, there's like. Bunch of people get together for a dinner party. Something goes wrong. It turns into a whodunit. Yeah, I mean that's the classic Agatha Christie type. Yeah, I was just about yeah, to say. Yeah. yeah, never really. I don't know something about those. See, things, I like, could I could deal with it in a book, like Agatha Christie's. Um, and then there were none. Yeah. Like that's one of my favorite books nice. of all time, and it totally fits that trope. But yeah, movies it doesn't it doesn't hit as well. Yeah, like I'd rather I'd rather go to like dinner theater. Yeah. yeah. You know? Dinner theater is a blast. So. <laughs> <laughs> Murder theater. So, in, in other words, yeah. happily. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not sure yet. Yeah. yeah. I'll watch it, but I'm not sure. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I probably won't. Yeah. And that's that's allowed. That's what, that's we what won't dinner, force you. Dinner, dinner party movies. Just. Mm. Yeah. Although the, the Last Supper was pretty good. It was a '90s movie with a uh, Ron Perlman and I think Cameron Diaz. Oh. Yeah, there's basically like a bunch of like uh, old classmates kind of have a reunion. Yeah. And then they invite Ron Perlman over because he's, I guess, he's like a conservative figure that they don't like. And like, hey, let's kill this guy. What? So, so it's like an hour and a half of them just being like that witty, edgy, like 90s dialogue. Yeah. Do you think that would be able to get made now, though? Yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, people do kind of. Uh, some people enjoy that, like genre or subgenre, as as you mentioned, you know, kind of the contained, like killer contained yeah. case type thing. Okay, fair Just enough. get like twelve of your favorite actors. And- yeah. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of uh, killers, oh, Clarice. Oh. <laughs> uh, apparently, the first episode's out. I haven't seen it. I've only seen the trailer. Yeah, uh, it's the Silence of the Lambs television show it takes place a year after uh the movie and um what what are you guys thoughts honestly i am disappointed yeah really? just like yeah well because like cbs is running it and i'm not i don't have anything against cbs but usually when they put stuff out it's either good or it's not and unfortunately from what i've seen from the critic reviews and like the amount of like backlash it's getting it's not it doesn't look like it's gonna hit well yeah, really? i think they're trying to go for like a hannibal kind of esque tv show mm-hmm. um but I don't know. Like, I feel like Clarice's story isn't as interesting as Hannibal's. So trying to make an entire TV series, eh, uh, like, Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's one of those things that should work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Clarice is, she, she's she's a character anyway. Like, she has a backstory and everything, um, you know, in her life after the whole Silence of the Lambs thing, the Buffalo Bill. Uh, I could see it What's working, but if it's... Good. A lot of it's the execution. I mean, from what I saw in the trailer, it looks like a ve- it's it's a police procedural set in the '90s, and yeah. I mean we've had those since the '90s. Police yeah. procedurals haven't changed that much uh, in the last couple decades. No, absolutely. Yeah. Like, and like the one thing that like I was kind of like upset about is that the main actress Rebecca Breed, she was originally in the originals, so I was really excited because she's a really good actress. But like 
from what I've read from the critic reviews and stuff too, like right now it's like a 38% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oof. Like that's not good at mm. all. But from like what I've read, it's not like the actor's fault. Like there's a ton of potential. It's just like something's not hitting right. Yeah. Weird. Because yeah, I watched the trailer for it and it looks like it was really well shot. Oh yeah. It looks really good. Like, that's the thing. It's like they, they have amazing. all the elements, but something's just not putting them together. Huh. It's not gelling. Yeah. And like it doesn't, it didn't, from, at least from what I saw, it, Looks like it just doesn't even need to be a Silence of the Lambs like spinoff. It could be any cop yeah. show with just yeah. Yeah, it, it's a cop show. Yeah, FBI yeah. cop show. Well, like another thing that I read from the critic reviews too is that they're hitting it over the head that Clarice is making her way in a man's world. And like, don't get me wrong, like I understand you're trying to be like, oh yeah, woo, woman uh, power, yeah. but like, are they going woke? Like super woke, I guess. Oh, oh boy, yeah. And it's like I get it. Like Clarice is a pretty ba like character, but like everybody knows that already. Yeah. You don't I need mean, to she, keep... she, she's proved herself. Yeah. Like, there's no need to prove herself again. Absolutely. Yeah. Although I do want to give him a shout out for keeping the original font. Yes. Yes. That so was that was nice. Points <laughs> for that one. As, as a font nerd. Yeah. yeah. I, I was like, yeah. Oh, they kept the font. Okay. It kind of warmed my heart a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Pedro Pascal. Dun, dun, yeah. he's, he's the hot ticket right now yes, it, it seems yeah. like he, he's know, he? he's currently oh, yeah. the actor that seems to be in everything yeah he is well yeah, he's gonna uh, what were you gonna say i was gonna bring up a gina carano thing but that can oh. wait that can wait yep <laughs> i was just gonna say like he's like upcoming he's like totally on the rise like he's been in, in like the acting biz for quite a while but since the mandalorian everybody knows his name yeah like nick cage they're doing that what that movie with him where he plays a crazy like billionaire who's a huge nick cage fan and yeah. ends up being a drug lord like that <laughs> looks hilarious and then, yeah i didn't realize he was in so much stuff yeah he yeah. was in quite a bit of stuff before the mandalorian and now he's finally getting his like fair dues i guess yeah it's kind of nice now he's he, gonna be joel he's he's yeah. gonna be joel in the last of us which uh yeah um i haven't played last of us like i've, oh, I've seen people play I, i've seen trailers and everything and great i hear game. it's a great game uh i played the hell out of that game yeah <laughs> so, so what do you think of of pedro being cast as joel then um i don't know i'm kind of lukewarm on it yeah i mean he kind of looks like joel enough at least to be passable and what like, isn't like the mandalorian and the last of us is basically the same, same thing yeah. Oh, it is, yeah it's a father figure taking care of somebody that's not related to him yeah so he guided him through a dangerous world yeah he probably doesn't yeah. need like to do a lot of stretching for this role no yeah same time though it's like it's got zombies in it well it's got cool <laughs> zombies too like a zombie that we haven't really seen uh much of in film or anything uh the cordyceps which are uh like the fungus that takes over your body yeah. Oh yeah, so it's not a standard zombie. That'll be nice. Uh, clickers, True. Mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they make that crazy. Like, yeah, they some, use like sound like location. Yeah, why is everybody use creepy sounds? Because they're creepy. They work. Yeah, it's they're supposed good. to be a creepy thing. There's zombies. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'll. I think it'll be good because, like, again, mm-hmm. like they saw that that Pedro is getting like a huge following and like that he's like kind of. No, I don't want to say peaking because I don't think he is. He's on the way. Yeah. And like, they're like, you know what? This would be a smart move. Like, if we get him in it, people are going to be happy. And I think from the most part, like, I've seen nothing but good things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love the game. Love the story. Um, HBO obviously has a pretty good track record. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would check it out, but I probably won't because I don't subscribe to HBO. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you can't get HBO. Uh, Max in Canada anyways. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I've never even tried. Yeah. I'm just disappointed because that's where... Um, which one is it? Willie's Wonderland is oh, releasing. And I'm damn. like, I want to watch it because it's come out and like uh, all the reviews and stuff are apparently fantastic. Everybody thinks it's one of Nick Cage's best movies. Huh. So I'm kind of like, I want to see it, but yeah. you can't watch it anywhere in Canada yet. Well, can't even do like a can't, those 30 day free trials. Nope. Nothing. Oh, Google Play is supposed to get be. it. And I think it's tomorrow that you're supposed to get it. But that's really? the only one. Too? Yep. Oh, boy. Wow. So I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much the same thing here. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that for our, our next uh, episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think a few people were disappointed because he doesn't look quite like Joel. Joel's yeah. kind of like the standard square jaw. Yeah, uh, like he's almost there. Yeah. But th- not, not quite. Yeah, he could pull it off. Makeup is a wonderful thing. It is. It is. Um, I didn't have this on our list of topics, but uh, they're doing a Borderlands movie. What? Uh, not interested. Yeah. They got <laughs> Jack Black as a Claptrap. No what? way. Yeah. They got uh, Kate Blanchett's going to be in it. What? And uh, 
Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be in it. And Kevin Hurt. What a weird... That, that's their lineup right now. That is a weird mashup of people. Yeah. But it's a weird huh. game. Borderlands is a weird... Yeah. <laughs> a weird I mean, with eccentric characters. Oh, actually, back to The Last of Us. Apparently, um, in the second one, there's a character, Abby. And the, there's the murmurs that The Rock might be playing this character. I don't know if... I, see, I don't know if... It's a spoiler or not, but... Okay, spoiler alert. This Abby character kills Joel eventually. So, um... You were always this guy. Yeah. I gave a warning. <laughs> oh, fair, you did. Okay. Still, or an though. alert. Yeah. An alert. Dang. Spoiler warning, spoiler alert. Yeah. But, yeah, so, uh... That'd be interesting. The Rock as a... I think, I think she's transgender, the character. And she just kills Joel, like, hard... Made a lot of people mad when the last of the Last of Us Two came out. Yeah, that's a no. I'm not. I'm not even diving into yeah. that. Nope. <laughs> I'm good. Moving on. <laughs> uh, we talked a little bit about Schwarzenegger on the uh, last show. Um, one of Schwarzenegger's classics, True Lies. Yeah, he's, get, he's getting a TV show. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I like when I, when like I when I heard of the idea, I'm like, okay, like, yeah. yeah. The movie was good. It yeah. had some great scenes in it. But I was reading about it, and uh, Mick G, a director, he did a lot of music videos in like the uh, 90s and 2000s. And I've seen some of his work, and no. it, he's, he's a bit of a turnoff for me. He was, I guess, most famously known for uh, the Charlie's Angels. Oh, the recent one that flopped? No, no. That like, was Elizabeth like Banks. The, oh. Yeah, the, the first one. Well, the. The, the one with like Drew Barrymore. Yo, or, the not, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. He, he directed those and... Uh, I didn't mind those. Eh, no, yeah. Not for me. Well, I thought he was like directing it, but there was another guy behind it too. Oh, I'm sure there's tons of people. I can't remember it. who it was, but no, like it but, was like he... The, there was like a different dude who wrote it and then he's directing it. And I think they were going to switch off like per episode kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, when I see the Mick G... Yeah. Attached to not, something, and I'm kind of just not doesn't warm around. your cockles. No, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm probably walking around it. My yeah. cockles will remain intact. Okay. What? The, okay. <laughs> I I got nothing. Yeah. Um. I, I don't. I haven't seen like the movie in a while, so like I can't really. Talk, it, like, well, everyone remembers the Jamie Lee Curtis yeah strip scene. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you're only hurting yourself. <laughs> Seriously. And the, the one where she like drops the Uzi and it like somersaults down the stairs. Yep. And just like kills all the bad guys. Well, like I thought they tried to so do good. like so Love it. like a similar but more recent True Lies one. Cause that sounds like I can't remember what it was called, but I think it was like Catherine Heigl or, mm-hmm. an, or no, sorry, uh Night and Day with Tom Cruise and uh Cameron Diaz. Okay. And it was like this like spy guy and he she was like trying to like avoid him or something. Yes. So he had a bad date or something. I don't know, like I'm all down for like reboots and stuff, but it gets to a point where it's like, can we not come up with an original idea for yeah. the uh, life of us? Apparently no. Because like the yeah. last two Simple years, has, well, no, like no. the last two years has been how many Disney remakes, how many like Marvel movies and stuff. And I'm not hating on those because they're great, but a little originality would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I miss sure. it. Yeah. They don't take risks anymore. It's kind of sad. Well, because they want to make the money and yeah. I, I get it. You got to be, yeah. you know, you got to make your bottom buck yeah. and stuff, but Oh, I miss I miss when like you could go to a movie and it wasn't the same six movies but with different titles. That's why you got to watch indie films, basically. Yeah, that's the that's where you're going to get it. Thank you for like, existing. <laughs> like phobias. Yes. Yeah. You see. Well. Uh, yeah. Yes, what next? We are into the the season of the Valentines. Uh, yes. This is going to come out, I think, after Valentine's, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. It's close enough. It's as close yeah. as we could get. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about some of well our. Lo- Love stories that we like and love stories that we don't like. Okay. I'm excited. All right. Who's going first? I, can we start with the worst one? Yeah, sure. Because yeah. I hate this ship so much. Ship? Yeah, they call, it's a relationship, but they call it a ship. Oh. The cool kids say it. The, the uh, online, the online cool kids say it. Kid. T- tumblers. <laughs> the Tumblr people. The Tumblrs. Um, but uh, yeah, no, the worst couple for me has to be Forrest and Jenny from Forrest Gump. It's a pretty brutal relationship. Yeah. It sucks. And it's like everybody's like, oh, but like Forrest loves her. No, for- Forrest deserves better. Yeah, Forrest 100%. is simping hard. He yeah. is. He's a cook. 
He totally is. But like, it just sucks because it's like throughout their relationship until like she's basically on her deathbed. Then she's like, you know what? Yeah, I'll give you a chance now because like I've sowed my wild oats. And, yeah, like, it's like I'm dying of AIDS. I probably got a year left in me. Now I'll give you a shot. Yeah, yeah. like and it's just like by the way you have a kid. Yeah, by the way, but it's just like I don't know. Like I never understood that relationship, and for me, it's just like why are you, like why did you have to make that a relationship? Why couldn't you keep it like a, an example of like what you don't do? Yeah, kind of thing. So I feel like Forrest deserves so much better. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Jenny in that movie. Oh man, Jenny is terrible. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. She was a swear word in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> she was just the worst. For the, like, <laughs> she really was though. Like, and I, I like, I never I understood know, why people tr- were like, "Oh my god, Jenny and Forrest." I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like, yeah. no. Yeah, this she is an example like of trash. no. Yeah, she was a terrible person. Although I guess she absolute terrible. Although I guess she did get the run for us to run line, so that's something. Some redeeming value. No, no yeah. redeeming quality yeah, okay. at all. It's that relationship trash. is a solid negative hundred. Don't do it. Nah. No. I like Force how, deserves uh, better. End of story. I like how some movie nerds went back and like looked at her tombstone and figured out the date on her uh, tombstone wasn't accurate. It's like, hold on, like <laughs> like March twenty third was not on a Thursday in nineteen eighty one. It was a Friday. Did they actually? Yeah. I think, yeah, some people do oh, that. Oh, my God. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a good pastime. Yeah. I mean, some people are look at these details really uh, intricately. Yeah, that's I true. I mean, there's the whole thing with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson being upset about the uh, stars in <laughs> Titanic because they weren't <laughs> accurate to the date. Oh, man. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of... that's. Shouldn't he be writing a book or something? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, yeah. who you got for your worst... Uh, this was actually a lot harder than I thought. I thought it'd be easy. Yeah, See, I had a lot easier time finding the like bad couples and good couples. But uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with a uh, I don't even remember the characters' names, but Titanic. Deca- Jack and Rose. Jack yeah. and Rose. There we go. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a good that segue. Well, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I remember. I, <laughs> I I had the privilege of seeing Titanic in the theater. And the only way I was able to make it through that was uh, there was a, a couple of ladies in the row in front of me. And through the whole movie, all they talked about, like loudly, was how hot Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio was. They're like, oh, I want to yeah. get me some of that. Like, oh, yeah, you get that girl. Like, it was, oh, it was, that was the best part of the movie. Just listening to these ladies just like freak out about DiCaprio. And, well, the best part of the movie for me was when the guy hits the propeller. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. That was pretty just, good. Also, tumbles. though, like I would like to point out that Jack could fit on the door with Rose, and that's another reason that they were a terrible couple. Because yeah, Rose like, was too selfish. Yeah, she's just too selfish. Yeah, she couldn't have enough door. Yeah, so she yeah. couldn't share the door. It's fu- it's actually funny because speaking of people who like go back through the movie and like find like <laughs> that kind of stuff, there's been people who've actually recreated that scene yeah. and like checked the door, and they're just like Rose. You're a, you're a terrible person. Man, you I can't believe you did that. Selfish. You loved him? No. Like, there's people who are, like, really animately <laughs> hate Rose. Then she chucks that diamond in the ocean? Yeah. Like, what, what the hell heck? are you doing? Yeah. You could at least pawn that or something. Yeah, like, they actually filmed that you part build a, in You could buy Halifax. a big, bigger door? Did they actually? Yeah. Nice. Um, oh, cool. I remember doing a tour of uh, Halifax, and they pointed, like, the... Uh, it was a back of a Coast Guard ship, actually, I think, where she tossed it off from, like Crazy. Canadian Coast Guard ship. Like, and on your left, this is where Rose was an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. And uh, actually, oh, it takes a lot for me to actually like laugh out loud during a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Titanic made me do it. Re- when That's go, not even a funny movie. When they go to, uh, yeah, right? Well, I mean, it kind of is. But uh, when they go to, actually, Mike, you know, what, what's the, the front? Bow? Mast? Yeah, the bow front of the boat where pointy like, end <laughs> yeah, yeah pointy end exactly the pointy end where like he covers her eyes oh and then they go like, like I'm oh, on top of the world king, king of the world I'm flying yeah. it feels like I'm fly- <laughs> like that, that line caught me totally off guard and I'd be right. burst out into like audible laughter in the theater how many glares did you get a lot <laughs> that was my next sentence people were mad at me <laughs> two ladies in front of you shut up he's hot <laughs> oh they didn't care they didn't even I didn't, they weren't even paying attention they were just focused on Leo, oh. yeah, but everyone else, none too impressed. Oh, that's hilarious! <laughs> My girlfriend at the time slapped me. And was like, I can't. <laughs> I, I couldn't stop laughing. It was hilarious. Oh boy. Uh, for me, my my worst is any movie where they take the glasses off the girl yeah. and then she's suddenly desirable. I she's hate all that. that. Yeah, it was a Freddie so Prince brutal. movie. 
Freddie yeah. Prince Jr. Oh, it, it was it was like an entire trope. Yeah, like yeah, that was like an sure. entire genre for like the longest time. It's like, hey, if you change yourself, then I'll think you're hot. It's yeah. like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? No. I feel like we should like call it like the the Clark Kent phenomenon. Pretty much. Oh my god! Yes. Yeah. The Clark so, Kent or phenomenon. the reverse Clark Kent. Yeah, the reverse yeah. Clark Kent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like I never understood that. Like even like growing up and like watching like movies where it's like, oh, well, oh my god, I can't remember what it was, but it was like the mechanic's daughter. She was like super hot. Molly Ringwald played her. Oh, and then uh, like sixteen candles. Yeah, I think that's it. And it's like I remember watching it and just being like, he's a terrible guy. Like, why are you? Why, <laughs> why are you bending over backwards for yeah. this total right? piece and, of crap? Yeah, but it, then it's like, I think Family Guy actually made a joke about it where it was like Peter was um, the main guy. I can't remember his name. And then Molly Ringwald's character comes in. <laughs> he's talking to the hot girl. And he's like, well, uh, according to 80s yeah, uh, yeah. law, yeah. it's like uh, the my average looking friend now looks hot. So I have to ignore the absolute hot girl and go to her now. Yep. And it's like, I don't know. It just frustrates me. I yeah. Feel like, I feel like we could do better. Yeah, the 80s. <laughs> crazy downs. <laughs> lots of cocaine. Lots of uh, yeah. frat houses. Lots of Ronald Reagan. Yeah, tons of Reagan. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> lots of Wall Street. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's invert. Yes. Our right, let's do some happy. And so, uh, Rachel? Uh, yeah, actually, this one, it took me a while to come up with because, again, like I was finding flaws in like every relationship I could find, which <laughs> I don't know is a, is a good thing. Um, but from Big Fish, actually, uh, Edward Bloom and Sandra Templeton's Interesting. Movie. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Also a fantastic film. I love that movie. Yeah. It's so good. And it's just like, I just I remember the all of it. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's, I've seen pieces of it. I love it. It's so good. But it's like, not only does it show a really good relationship between like the father and son, or not really good relationship between the father and son, but like, like the building of that relationship and trying to like reconnect connect with your kid after he thinks you're basically a liar yeah. <laughs> but it's like the one scene where it's like um edward meets uh sandra for the first time and he just he's like i'm gonna marry this girl he's like i'm in love with her and then he does like the crazy big romantic gesture of, like planting all the daffodils in front of her dorm because that's her favorite flower and then her fiance at the time found out beat the crap out of this guy and then she was like you know what that guy's not actually that good and then ended up going with edward's character and i was just like yes Yep. And it's just yeah I don't know just like even when they're like showing like the older versions of them and seeing that scene where it's like he's in the water and like she hops in the tub with him and is like realizing this is like one of the last times she's gonna be able to do this with her husband it's just yeah I don't know it's it's a very sweet scene and it's just my favorite relationship for sure yeah. if you're in a relationship with any any person chances are you and McGregor could steal that person from you I, oh I'm sure it. yeah I mean, home record, total home record. I would say he's a home record. I'm not saying he's done it, but if he wanted to, oh, yeah. game over. Game well, over. yeah. <laughs> I wanted, it. I wanted to defend but, him, yeah, but let's no. Just face it. <laughs> let's be honest for a second. Yeah. But like, you've seen the guy, right? He's a good-looking dude. Yeah. I, like I said, I'm not exempt from this rule. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is. Like, if he no. just comes knocking on my door, I'm like, oh man. You really? Come on, man. Gotta make a phone call. Hey, babe, uh, you and McGregor's at my door. I love you. I'm sorry, but gotta go. Uh, I'll leave your stuff on the lawn. I uh, uh, hope you have a good life. But I'm gonna go do my you and McGregor thing. Okay. Well, if he was gonna sweep you off your feet, what, what would what would he have to do? Not much. Yeah. <laughs> just show up. <laughs> yeah. Just like, knock on my door. Yep. I don't know. A case of beer would be nice. Be a nice <laughs> bonus, but really, as long as he's just, he's there, he's yep, low cost, ready and willing. That's all <laughs> I need. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Chris, who do you have for your uh, best? Oh, my best. Yeah. All right. I'm going with True Romance. Oh. Nice. Clarence and Alabama. Mm. Alabama Whirly. Uh, movie Tony Scott written by Quentin Tarantino who seems to show up a lot yep. in our episodes um, let's see what we got here it's basically like almost your typical Bonnie and Clyde kind of relationship kind of a lonely dude uh, works at a comic book store Yep. meets a, a call girl on his birthday not by chance and then they just kind of throw all caution into the wind and get married right away and uh, basically going to crime spree. Hmm. There's a lot more to it than that. I oh, yeah. Just, I just don't want to take too much time up. Um, actually, Gary Oldman, in a 2011 interview, <laughs> yeah. 
said that uh, his role in True Romance was one of the best, one of his favorite. Did he al- actually? Alongside his role in JFK. Wow. Granted, this is a 2011 interview. Oh, so, so it's he been may a few have, years. He may have changed his mind. And he wasn't even in the movie that long. Yeah, like he was in there for like, what, like a couple scenes? Yeah, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. But like, Not again, much. in classic Gary Oldman style, he like totally stole the show. Oh, yeah, he, he plays like a, 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 like a fake Rasta drug dealer. He's got a <laughs> scar across his eyes. It's, it, it's great. It's, he it's had a lot of fun. Gary. Yeah. Uh, Tarantino wrote the script, as I mentioned. He sold the script for $50,000, which apparently is the lowest amount of money you can legally get for selling a script. Oh. So well, that's like minimum wage script writing. See, it's crazy because if he tried... If someone tried to buy a script from him now, whole oh, like well, he'd be paying way more. So yeah, that uh, I didn't know there was a minimum wage for uh, scriptwriters. Fifty thousand. Yeah, I was originally gonna pick uh, Mickey and Mallory from Natural Born Killers. Oh yeah, but we already talked about that movie, so I went with Two Romance. Turns out, I actually accidentally did pick Mickey and Mallory. Oh, apparently they were actually part of the same script. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know this until last night. So basically. True Romance was, um, okay, it's a kind of complicated story, but it, it followed the story of Natural Bone Killers up to the prison, like, br- break. Yeah. And then where this picks up, picks up uh, was a, there's a screenwriter that writes a Hollywood movie about Mickey and Mallory, and they catch wind of it and track this guy down. So he goes on the lam and he's running. And True Romance is the movie he writes while he's on the about them, while he's on the run from them. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, and like it when you describe the movie, it's like that kind of sounds like uh, Natural Born Killers. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I guess originally it was supposed to be like a miniseries or something, and then it just kind of, you know, how Quentin Tarantino does the like chronological kind of jumping around. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. supposed to be kind of like that. So I guess eventually they just separated the two stories into two separate movies. So technically, they uh, were originally Mickey and Mallory. Oh my god! Wow, connections. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of double dipped. I am, uh, I'm kind of flabbergasted right now. I won't lie. Weird, right? That's. I read that. I was like, I mean, it but it sense. like, yeah, like now that you say it, it's like it makes so much sense. Yep. So uh, yeah, true romance is kind of a. Which, well, it, actually, I think I think it came out before Natural Born Killers. Yeah, it did. Yep. But um, yeah, a little a little fun backstory there. That, only Tarantino men. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Well, I got, I got, I have a troll answer and I have like a nice. real answer. I love it. The real answer is up. The first oh, 15 yeah. minutes of up. That is heartbreaking. Oh yep. my God. They, they made a better romance story than Romeo and Juliet did in like 15 minutes. With no dialogue. Yeah. With no dialogue. And no Leonardo DiCaprio. Even just with like, a gun with that says sword on it. Oh, I couldn't stand that. Movie. That was brutal. <laughs> But yeah, no, great pick. I almost picked but, that, oh, yeah. that just breaks my heart, too, thinking about it. My troll answer is Braveheart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because there's, there's two romances. It's the, uh, the childhood friend. Like, he falls in love with her. Yeah. They get married in secret, and then she gets killed off by the English, and then he starts his rebellion against the English, and then he falls in love with the French princess. And he's also really, really, really in love with Scotland. Yeah, he's got. That, that, the, that is the true. That love is story. the true romance. <laughs> there is his love for Scotland. He definitely, uh, yeah, stands at attention. If you know what I mean, when it comes to Scot- <laughs> Scotland. If you want a really good love story, make sure you find somebody that loves you as much as Mel Gibson loves Scotland. There you go. That's it. And that's the. That's like. That's it. That's or, the end of or at least William Wallace. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, and then he gets drawn and quartered. <laughs> he does. What a horrible way to die. Yeah, there's. Like, they could have just drawn you or quartered you, but there's. They decided to go down. both. Well, yep. like when you when you piss off the English, yeah, yeah, they, you piss off the English. Yeah, they break yeah. out the horses and rope, and they actually put out a series or a movie on Netflix. It's basically what happens after Braveheart. Oh, crazy! Uh, with Robert hmm. the Bruce, um, I think it's called Outlaw King or something like that. Oh, I've heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, came out like a couple knows. years back, but it basically picks up like directly after like Wallace gets oh. killed. Yeah, because that was Chris Pine, wasn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah. 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 I know. It looked really good. This. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a couple years back and pretty short it's Netflix. Yeah, I remember when Mel Gibson used to not be nuts. I mean, maybe he was always nuts, but at least we didn't know about it. Yeah. Now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. been in anything really in a while. Yeah, he used to be really cool. There's yeah. a lot of actors like that that I found out, though. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Myers. Apparently, he's just a... Nightmare. Terrible yeah, person. apparently he's hard to work with. Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Oh. 
No. Uh, Kristen Heigl, apparently. Okay, we're getting we're getting anyway. we're getting into the weeds here. Well, to segue from <laughs> yeah, romance. Let's see how you do this one. <laughs> <laughs> let's romance this conversation into our favorite Batman's. Ah, uh, well done. Uh, it counts. It I, counts. I, give that, I give that a solid I, eight. I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know, Mike. You've you've killed the segues, so okay, it's it's good. Okay, who's your favorite Batman and uh, why? Maybe I'm cheating, but I'm going to say <laughs> Kevin Conroy, uh, who was the voice of Batman during the 90s cartoon. Nice. As well as uh, the Batman Beyond cartoon and a couple of the animated movies. <laughs> but when I think Batman, uh, like I pretty much think that that 90s cartoon, like it nailed the aesthetic. It had its own aesthetic. Um, it had Mark Hamill playing the Joker. Yeah, like he is nice. the iconic Joker. He is. Um, just yep. everything about that show is fantastic so yeah that that's why i want to give props to conroy for doing that uh, oh absolutely cool performance and that's also the show where harley quinn originated. yeah 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 yep. oh yeah, yeah. She, she didn't come from the comics that. she didn't come from the comics she was an original for the show crazy yep actually speaking of bad relationships that's another one <laughs> anyways yeah a little, little toxic yep a little bit but no good choice yep excellent choice I don't, I don't think that's cheating no uh you want to go first you want me to go first? i can all, all right, right. Good Adam West. Yep. Yeah, yes. Obviously. <laughs> yep. He danced. Whatever he needed. The Blue. bat, whatever. The bat he, belt. He had on him. Yep. Shark repellent. Yeah. Uh, he I mean, had shark yeah. repellent? Oh, yeah. yeah. Attaboy. Right. I love it. You got to have that at the ready. <laughs> you never know when you're going to be He was like a cartoon shark. character. Like, whatever he needed, he just reached behind yeah. the back. Yeah. And there it was. Oh, you need a bat sponge? Sure. Yeah. You need a bat cell phone? I probably wouldn't call it a cell phone, but. Bat phone? Yeah, bat phone. There yeah. you go. Perfect. See? It works. And I am going to go on record and give him credit for the OG dad bod. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I'll give. Yeah. I agree. I think uh, he doesn't get credit for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm giving it to him right now. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Adam West. Adam West. Yeah. Nice. Totally. Um, oh, this one was tough for me. I, get, like, I have to give an honorable mention to Michael Keaton because I think he played yep. Batman yep. pretty well. Totally. Um, he also apparently studied like echolocation, like tried to get into a bat's mind for this role. So like Which is weird. Right? But, but like it, it seems odd Brad though for like a Tim Burton movie. Yeah. yeah I suppose that So it, yeah, no, I gotta give him a shout out for that. Cause like he's actually spent like spent the time trying to study this animal and be like, Yeah, I gotta be the bat. <laughs> like, shouldn't he be like spending more time learning how to be a billionaire orphan? Like Batman yeah. doesn't act like a bat. No, no. still though, he has I don't know. bat like qualities. No, but, but yeah. like I, I still got to give him a shout out because it's like I, I have a feeling he was like, okay, how do I really embrace this character kind of thing, right? He, he was yeah. also the Batman that I mean, I mean, we had the sixties Batman, we had Adam, Adam West, yeah. and oh, like yeah. nothing for like years. for like years. So mm. like he has to be credited with like bringing the first like comic book character back to the big screen. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I give him props for that. Yeah. Crazy fact, though. Apparently, people were really pissed off when they found out that Michael Keaton was gonna pl- like play Batman to the point where like Warner Brothers actually received fifty thousand letters of petition to get him out of that role. That happens for every Batman. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Batman yeah, is just yeah. like it's yeah. almost a cursed role. But my best Batman has to be Christian Bale. I think out of yeah. all of the Batmans, he's probably played him the best. Yeah. And like to be fair though, like when you have like Christopher Nolan on the helm of that and you also have Heath Ledger playing the Joker you have Tom Hardy playing um, Bane. Bane thank you I yep. had a moment there uh, <laughs> and then Gary Oldman as like Court the police commissioner, commissioner. yeah like like and like Morgan Freeman like he, it was like just an all-star cast like you like you had a really well, hard time like not yeah. doing that well well as much as like Keaton kind of brought like superhero movies yeah. back um uh, Bale kind of modernized them. absolutely yeah well like and like i remember going to the theaters and just being blown away and like sitting there like whoa like this is crazy and like i know people make fun of christian bale because of his batman voice yeah but <laughs> batman. but at the same time though like it's so good i like i can watch that i can watch that like yeah series over and over again so definitely christian bale is best batman for me without a doubt him and nolan have worked together quite a bit hey yeah they're a good duo sorry just thinking out loud <laughs> but like that's okay but yeah like they work well together, though. Yep. Like, you get those actor-director, like, combos, and it's just like, yes. It's like Johnny Depp and Tim Burton. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, it hasn't always worked out. Oh, absolutely, but, like, Not still, though. Not but, yeah. Cool. But, yeah. Yep. Do, do, uh, does anyone have a worst? Adam West. 
<laughs> don't do I them mean, like that. I'm kidding. It's kind of fair. Worst, I don't. Yeah. I yeah. Like I know George Clooney gets a uh, ragged on. Yeah, yeah that, so does Ben. That's Affleck. not Clooney's fault though. Really. Yeah. Like, I, I, everybody. Yeah. The only thing people really remember from like us. the Clooney movies is like the, the nipples. nipples. Yep. So like the nipples. You gotta feel bad and for the a little bit. Yep. And yeah. But yeah, like I know Ben Affleck got quite a bit of hate as well. And like, don't get me wrong, I don't like him as an actor, but I don't think he deserved that much hate for the role. No. I, I didn't like him as Batman, but like I knew a lot of people who thought he fit it really well. Yeah, like I, I haven't seen actually like Ben Affleck's performance as Batman. Like I don't know how he plays the character. But I thought just like as far as like physical appearance goes, I yeah, thought he, he, he pretty he good. looks like a billionaire though. He way. does. Yeah. Like he yeah. he like he fit it really well. Yeah. I think the problem is with DC, they have such a hard time competing with Marvel. Yeah. Like when it comes yeah. to superhero Marvel movies. Marvel figured out kind of the formula to make things work. Yeah. Um now apparently they 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 are recutting what, what was it, the Justice League movie? Oh yeah. my god, the yeah. The whole Schneider cut thing has been like talked about for years, so they're actually doing yep. it. They're but, it's apparently I don't know if this is true or not, four hours long. My God. And apparently the one that's coming out isn't even the Snyder cut. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how true that is. I mean, it's, oh. it is the internet. So, speaking of it, though, have you guys seen the new look for Jared Leto's Joker? No, uh, I think I have. I don't yeah. think I want to. It's actually really creepy. Yeah, I I don't know. I feel like I I was kind of excited to see Leto as the Joker. I don't think he got right. enough play, screen t- time in Suicide Squad. Yeah. So like, I know people were like, "Well, none of the scenes made sense." It's like, yeah, but they had a completely different story going into it where they were like actually gonna hunt down the joker and like that's the whole story that was supposed to happen in suicide squad and then they were like just kidding we're gonna go with the enchantress which was the stupidest idea just wiggling through yeah. her her little, the movie. Like, and then like the weird love story between her and the soldier i'm flaccid like i was just it was t- terrible yeah but i don't know i'm i don't know if i'm down to watch four hours but i also want to give jared leto's joker a chance I, feel like I tried. Didn't get that. Uh, uh, it's it's I, not there for he me. He was in what, like two scenes for the Suicide Squad? Yeah, it was like pretty, maybe. And he just purred the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like there was so much of that story yeah. that was missing that, like, the scenes that they did use obviously didn't make sense. So it's like I want to give him a fair chance. I'll give him a second try. But so, if you fail the second try, Jerry Leto, we're over. We're yeah. done. There was nothing about even those minimal scenes that he was in that made me think I want more of this crap. No, and that's like, fair. No, I just I don't nah. think I don't think he got a fair shake. I I don't think that's. That's cool. Well, we didn't discuss this, but my favorite Joker is the yes. Mark Hamill Joker. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. What? Mark Hamill killed that. Yeah. Who's the Batman and the one with uh, Jim Carrey as the Riddler? Oh, wasn't that, was that Michael was Keaton? Cl- no, no. It was either Clooney or Val Kilmer. I, I think probably it might have been Kilmer. I, yeah, I forgot Val Kilmer played Batman. Yeah. But uh, that was one of those casting choices that was so just heartbreaking. Yeah. Because I heard Jim Carrey, he was at pretty much the top of his game. He, yeah, he yeah. was. Playing the Riddler, I was like, oh, "Okay, okay, this is gonna be great." And then, that. what we got? Yeah, like the yeah. hair, the weird unitard. Yeah. What do you think of Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face? <sighs> yeah. Uh, I forgot about that too. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if we're gonna speak about good like villains, though, I gotta say Bane. Like Tom Hardy's Bane was. Yep killer like don't get me wrong heath ledger obviously killed the joker but like i don't think bang gets enough love i think like his character was like he's iconic yeah like he played it so well and i think it really shows like what kind of actor tom hardy is like yeah. i've seen him in so much and everything he plays it's like wow can anyone do a bane voice no uh, <laughs> no i can't <laughs> is he just gonna, like, yeah, yeah there we go <laughs> well, like, what's that famous line it's like you were you were shaped by the dark or whatever. Yeah, no, you were. I, I, you, you won't merely adopted the dark. I was born into it. I, I mean, by it, something like that. Like that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it. It's like you were adopted. The dark. You, you adopted the darkness, but I was born into the darkness. But yeah, like I can't dark. even. I can't. I can't even try that. I'm yeah, not even there. But yeah. Jim Carrey as the Riddler, heartbreaking. I feel like that could have been so much better. Yeah. What do you what do you all think about Mr. Freeze though and Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, uh, the worst thing about that <laughs> I don't want to talk about it is uh, <laughs> like Freeze's character. Yeah. Um, actually, in the cartoon again, they kind of more established this, like Freeze's backstory with his wife and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know they tried to do that for the movie, but no. Like uh, Freeze is like a great like tragic character. He but, is. But the Arnold version, not so much. Yeah, no. yeah, the, the, <laughs> you the tried Batman, though. As a yeah, as a brand, Batman has definitely had its peaks and valleys. But 
no better casting than Danny DeVito as the penguin. That was good. Yep. That, that was great. Good. Michelle Pfeiffer. That. Yep. As Catwoman. Not much room for cake in that outfit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that thing is tight. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Remember that? Remember that Catwoman movie? Oh, with Hal Berry? Hal Berry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was. Uh, I never watched it, but. Yeah. I want to say it was good, but it really wasn't. Oh, you watched it? Well, of course I did. Man, I, I love Hal Berry. I, I, I remember seeing it, but I could tell you absolutely nothing. Yeah, like, I don't remember about it. 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 It's almost like one of those things where it's like. Did I watch this? Like, did this actually exist? Or is this, like, some weird memory I have in my mind? Didn't, like, the director, doesn't he go by, like, a, like one name, like Cher or Madonna? I'm not sure. <laughs> you might have to look <laughs> that one up. The only thing about that but... one is that I remember that exists. She, like, just yeah. turned into a cat. Yep. She, like, just, she's, like, literally, like, yeah. going around, like, oh, looking at herself and, like, all that stuff. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, you could be Catwoman. You don't need to be that much of a Catwoman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, more woman, less cat. Yes. Well, that wraps up our, our bat talk. Yeah. Um, I'm Batman. We're going to move things over to Chris because Chris has brought in another yeah. graphic novel series. On the topic of love stories, that's kind of the theme we we're going for today. We got some CanCon, Canadian content here. Yep. Scott Pilgrim. Classic. Um, most people probably know, <laughs> at least are aware of this story by now. Actually, I'll hold it up for the graphic. The graphic is probably going to cover this. So it'll probably cut off my hand, too. So if you want to see all 10 fingers, hit me up on OnlyFans. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, or in your is case, that your o- joke? only hands. <laughs> only hands. There we go. Oh, God. I'm starting an app. <gasps> uh, yeah, Canadian uh, better guy. Basically, f- I don't know how just it, it's been a while since I read it. Yep. Uh, basically, um, movie was great too. Great movie. Yep. But uh, I, I've only seen the movie. I haven't read the. Uh, yeah, I haven't read the. It's like anything. It's a. It's the movie with more. Yep. Yeah. Takes falls place. In, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, it falls in love with a girl. Has to deal with her uh, ex boyfriends. Kind of battles it out with them in a comic book video game style. Yep. Super entertaining. Um, but then he discovers his true love was in front of his face the entire time. You know what, Scott Pilgrim there we go. Yep. was like, I, I don't know if this is controversial or not. He's another terrible example of a relationship. Yeah, he's a bit of a cuck, too. Yeah, it's... Uh... What'd you just say? Cuck. Oh, <laughs> oh I panicked. <laughs> Sorry. I've already swore on this episode, so I don't think you gotta, you gotta worry about that. Yeah, I just... Okay, anyways. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't remember if they actually address it, but it definitely takes place in Toronto. Yep. Whether they address it or not, I'm, I don't remember. I know they do in the movie. Yeah, like it, in, it's like uh, like the intro was like in a far off land called Canada or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's right, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. The movie visuals too, by the way, I thought they killed that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like like the all of like the, the, the video games, yeah, and all that stuff. It was so good. The yeah. anime like streaks in the background, and I'm just like I'm a kind of a dork where like if I'm watching a movie or TV show, I just like kind of geek out when I see a location that I know of. Oh, same. It's like, hey, that's, that's like Toronto. Like, I've I, been there. I, I, I lived like three blocks from that place. Because yeah, like, one of the settings is a record store in Scott Pilgrim. It's a record store uh, called Sonic Boom. I used yeah. to shop there all the time. It was at, um, for our Toronto friends, uh, Bloor and Bathurst, maybe a half a block east of that. I, I, it's probably not still there. I haven't been back in years. But yeah, I seen that in the movie and I was like, ah. I know exactly where that is. I used to buy records there. Like even um, oh, there's a few other locations, but definitely Sonic Boom. That that kind of yeah made it a little close to home for me. So I kind of nerded out in that way. Uh, for the video gamers out there, they actually yeah. re-released the video game because uh, they put out a game like right after the movie came out. Uh, for like I remember playing it on PlayStation Three, but they re-released it. Uh, it's like a side scrolling beat em up. Yeah, like and you collect, like, yeah, you collect like tunies and stuff like that. <laughs> nice. Things. Very River City Ransom. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, if you want some Canadian content and you haven't read this or seen the movie, uh, it'll give you. Oh, this, this isn't going to air until after the weekend. All right. Well, I hope, hopefully you had a great weekend. If you have a slow week, <laughs> um, check it out. Sure. Hopefully, I, I'm probably blocking a camera. I always do. It's kind of your, your, that's, your that's gigs. It's my brand. Yep. Camera blocker. 
Well, uh, that brings us to the end of this episode of uh, Media Minute. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you liked what you saw, think about liking, think about subscribing, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. Happy belated Valentine's Day. Hope you had a good one. And I'm Rachel Eich. <laughs> we'll see you next time.